Welcome to January's Leaco Challenge. Today's problem is sort the matrix diagonally. A matrix diagonal is a diagonal line of cells starting from some cell in either the topmost row or the leftmost column and going in bottom right direction. You can see these diagonal directions and these are going to be the matrix diagonals. Now, given an M times N matrix mat of integers, sort each matrix diagonal in ascending order and then return the resulting matrix. So we want to take these diagonal uh, lines, sort them, and then return it in the same format as before. You can see here like 2, 1, that gets sorted to 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, all, all, um, so on and so forth. So the statement is pretty straightforward, but how would we solve this? And because we're trying to do diagonal sorting, uh, it's very tricky. We're, not, we're probably going to have to create some sort of temporary structure to store this information and sort it there and then restructure our matrix completely to get our sorted diagonals. So to start off with, how would we create a list of lists of all our diagonal um, uh, matrix diagonals? Well, you can see that we can start at the bottom row, move up, or okay, start with the bottom row and just move down one and right one each time until we're out of bounds. So we start here, we can only add one, so we move and we're out. Uh, we start here and add two, move here, two, one, and then we're out. Start here, three, two, one. And we're gonna actually have to do it for starting at the bottom row to the second most bottom row, then go with the column um, to the right and move all the way to the last column. And that's gonna give us all the numbers. And using that data structure, we can sort all these lists and then figure out a way to like recreate our matrix. So let's start off by thinking about how we might create that structure. Uh, I'm going to start off with the bottom row and move in a top to right fashion. So I'll have to have two for loops to do that. Let's first initialize our M and N, which is going to be the length of matrix and the length of matrix two, or I'm sorry, length of matrix zero. Now we want to have some sort of structure here to store this information. So I'll call that new mat. Uh, that's kind of a bad name, but that's fine. So for i in range of starting with m minus 1 all the way to 0, not negative 1 because we want to go to the second um, row and move backwards. And what we'll do is initialize a row and column here. The row is going to be the i and the column is always going to start with 0, right? So while we're inbounds, while row is less than m and C column is less than N, we're going to add to our some sort of temporary list. So I'll call this temporary list. And let's add to that the matrix oops, R, C. And we have to make sure to increase our R and our C and realize that each one of these lists will probably have a different size until we're in the middle where they're gonna be the same for a while. Uh, or not, like it could be that um, it's like a perfect square. Uh, who knows, they could all be different. So that should give us, well, first we need to add to our new matrix, right? So new matrix dot append this temp. Now we want to sort this, but just for now, let's make sure that we're doing this right. We also want to go from uh, left to right with the columns. So for uh, J in range of N, uh, we're going to do something very similar, but instead of the R being I, we'll start with 0, and C is going to be the J instead. So the same thing, we'll have a temporary array. While row is less than M and column is less than N, append to R temp, the matrix R, C, and then increase our R and C. So let's print out this new matrix and make sure that, oh, well, let's first add it here. Make sure that we add it, make sure that we're doing this right. So if we printed out our new matrix, what does it look like? Well, hopefully it looks kind of like, uh, starts small, increases, and then gets small again. And that's what it looks like here. Um, if we had this and compared it to our inputs, you'll quickly see that it's kind of a different way of looking at our matrix example. So if we had this, you can visualize it like this. 
Now, how does this look? Well, uh, if you like flip a little bit, it's almost like you can kind of see it. The three, like three, three, one. Like if you've kind of tilt your head, one, 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 two. That's the bottom run, two, two, one, two, three, three, one, one. So, so it's there, right? Um, and we're gonna have to figure out how we could move through this new structure to recreate our, our matrix. But before that, let's make sure that we sort our temp or temp list here. These are the diagonal arrays. Uh, let's make sure that we sort that before we add it to our new matrix. So, okay, now, now we need to figure out how can we um, recreate our our matrix. So to do that, let's start off by creating the output. So I'm call that just whatever list. Well, this is tough, right? Because this, because the structure is totally different. Um, like imagine if we want to recreate this, how would we have to do it? So if you think about it, let's just say we move down right and just pop off on the very right everything that's here so if we pop off up until the point where uh, we added four because it's with is going to be a four let's say we pop off and add somewhere I uh, add to a list like one 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 two and then we can end that iteration then we have our bottom row here right and now we want to pop off this pop off pop off pop off pop off now we have two two one two and finally, we have three, three, one, one. But the trick is, we got to make sure that we stop our loop when we added enough numbers. Uh, and if we see like that uh, the list is empty, we need to skip all the way to the point that there is going to be one, so we can add. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's see here. Um, to do that, I have to have a nested loop. I'll say four. It doesn't really matter for row in range of m. What we'll do is start off initializing some some variable to say zero, and we're going to create a temporary list here, and we want to add while um, uh, let's see, oh, well, we need another loop, right? So for let, let's say four k in range of the length of new matrix because that's going to be as far as we go down remember that we're only going to go down these and should never come to a point where we like have to go around uh, to add more so 4k in range of length of new matrix uh, first thing is if i is greater or equal to like the number that we need to add here uh, or that's going to be what the number of columns, right? So that's n. If i is greater, then then we want to just break this because we're because we're done. We've already added enough to our temporary list. Uh, otherwise, we want to make sure that uh, this is not a blank. So if new matrix row or k, I mean, if this is equal to an empty list, we actually want to continue our for loop, right? Uh, otherwise we will add to our temporary list. Um, oh, well, let's first like pop off from, from our new matrix here. It's not J, it's K. And we're gonna pop this off. That's gonna be our candidate. And we're gonna append this candidate to our temporary array. This will all be in order and just increase our I like this to make sure that we break as soon as we add it enough. Now this probably doesn't look great, but um, for, for the sake of argument, let's just say that this is fine. And once we do this, we can return our output. But I will mention that this isn't complete. Uh, one thing, oh, new matrix. Oh, right, not has to be K. So some, so sometimes I need to name my stuff better because I just confuse myself. One thing is uh, you can see that we actually formed this backwards, right? So we actually need to reverse this uh, to make sure that it looks like the same old structure. 
And re honestly, reversing isn't too expensive. It's O of N. So that should be fine. Now, will this work? Well, let's see. Um, it does get accepted. So that's great. This was my first approach, and I was surprised that it worked uh, because there was a lot of insorting. I, I didn't think it was particularly optimal. And it's not. This is not not an optimal solution. In fact, if you look at the solutions, it'll give you some really good explanations of what the optimal way to do about this is. Um, so why did I even go through this? Well, to get to the optimal solution, you have to start... It's not, it's not a bad idea to go through like different approaches, even if they're not great. Because if this was an interview and you just came up with the optimal solution immediately, that's suspicious. Like, you must have seen this problem before, or maybe you're a genius, I doubt it, but um, like going through some bad approaches or, or not as optimal could actually help you get to the optimal solution better. Like remember that we did this popping thing? Well, uh, knowing that, what's a way that, what's some sort of structure that we could use to not have to sort it every time? What about a heap? We could use a heap um, to store our diagonals and copy somewhat of the, what we did before with this popping. Um, but in fact, we don't even need all this. Like one of the things we can realize pretty quickly is what is common between all of these diagonals. And if you think carefully, one thing that's actually common is if you subtract the column from the row, they should all be the same with all these numbers. So for instance, like here, this is zero and one, that's negative one, one, um, this is row one, column two, that's also negative one. All these are gonna be in the diagonal negative one. And here, this should be zero, it's like, this is row zero, it's three, or I'm sorry, this would be negative zero, two, so this would be negative two, uh, so if we just subtract the column from the row, perhaps we can do something like that. Like, all right, so let's avoid all this and uh, just recall what this structure looked like here and think about how we might make this a little bit more optimal. So say that instead of this, we'll uh, create a dict and we're going to put a list in here. And what we can do is say, all right, for row in range of m and four column in range of n we will use row minus column as our key and append that to this list but instead of just appending it we are going to actually do a heap push and make it into a heap so we can just do a heap push here and we are going to push the matrix row column. Looks like I'm set up. Okay, so let's look at what that looks like. Like, would this actually work? And um, it's not sorted, so you can't totally tell, but this actually is the same structure. Like, if we start with negative, um, negative 3, it goes like 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 2, 1. And that actually looks the same. It's just that it's not sorted right now. But that makes it a lot easier for us to be able to recreate our, our matrix. All we need to do now, uh, notice that this doesn't look sorted, but that's because it's a heap, by the way. Uh, every time we pop now, we're going to get the minimum one. So that's going to make it a lot easier. Uh, instead of doing my really twisted for loops, uh, we could just say, well, let's do the same thing. But this time, we're going to update our matrix uh, with whatever is going to pop off of this key here. So what I mean by that is, we'll just say, all right, heap pop this new matrix row column. And finally, we can return our matrix here. And that actually works. Now, what's going on? Well, the reason this works is this, this key is consistent, right? And the order that we're going in 
um, because we've already essentially sorted here with this heat push, when we recreate it now and go through and pop it off, it's like we're almost taking it back off in a different order. Now it's gonna be in sorted order. Then we just return our matrix. So isn't that brilliant? Now there are actually even further optimizations here where they try to avoid even using this, this new matrix. But I, you know, I think that's overkill. This is already freaking brilliant. This is an amazing solution. Um, so I think I'll just end it here because the other ones really, I think just confuse you more. It, it, just getting to understand this, I think is uh, difficult enough. So, okay, thanks for watching my channel and remember, do not trust me, I know nothing.